With so many things going cordless, why not an airbrush? I decided to try one out and share the review coming up on JC's Rip Track. Hi there, my name is John and welcome to JC's Rip Track, a place for advice and tips on adding realism to your model trains or modeling anything for that matter. So if you're looking for ways to transform your plastic models into something that looks like it belongs on the rails today, then click on subscribe and that little bell icon so you can receive a notification every time I upload a new video. So have there been any new tools for modeling or scenery that you're interested in trying and haven't yet? Let me know in the comments section below. Okay, first off, a little bit of a confession. Usually random online advertising doesn't sway me. I often take it with a great big grain of salt, but I've seen advertisements for a cordless airbrush for quite a while. I was admittedly curious, but still reluctant to click on a Facebook or a Google ad. The idea of an airbrush that wasn't tethered to a heavy and possibly loud compressor had some appeal, but I genuinely wondered if they would work. Buying my original airbrush remains one of the best investments that I have made for my hobby. Having an untethered airbrush could meet all kinds of options for model railroading, especially for scenery stuff. The ads themselves seem to be ridiculously cheap compared to what I know to be quality airbrushes. So I went into this with a great deal of skepticism. However, I figured that if I was getting these kinds of ads for cordless airbrushes, my viewers would be too. So I thought I'd do a little bit more digging on your behalf to see what I could find out, seeing if they are indeed worth it. I decided to take the plunge on one in particular with the label Autolock, which seems to be in the mid-range price-wise of these cordless airbrushes that you can find on Amazon. I ordered the unit and it arrived just as a family emergency unfolded, so it sat near my hobby desk for more than a month before I was able to review it. Now I can. So. Is it worth it? Well, let's get over to my hobby desk and I'll put it to work and see what we can find out. Hey, this is just a box opening of a uh, new thing that I that I got a little while ago, but I just haven't had a chance to even open it. It, it arrived um, a little over a month ago, um, just before I had to uh, make a trip to Calgary. Um, and it's now here and I uh, thought I would open uh, open this up and you can have uh, have a look. So this is a cordless airbrush. Um, and so there's just a uh, couple things uh, as part of this. We have, um, this is actually a compressor. Um, so I'm just, uh, as, you can see, as you can see here, um, and uh, I've been told these things come fully charged, which according, according to this, yes, uh, it is. You can see the, 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 the purple lights uh, coming in on it. And then you actually have uh, the airbrush itself, which is a, uh, a basic dual, uh, dual action, um, uh, a basic dual action airbrush. And I'm, um, and uh, the airbrush just kind of pops on the end there. And uh, so, and then you have the cup. just pops on the end here and basically you can hear it uh, starting up and uh, it, the, it's actually uh, just right out of the box is literally producing air so now I'm gonna have to kind of figure out how, to, how best to hold it because I normally hold my airbrushes kind of kind of like this so that's Fairly good, consistent pressure, just like uh, like right out of the box there. So part of it is just like figuring out, okay, how well does this airbrush work? Uh, how does it compare to uh, to to my uh, to my Grex? Um, now in in the in the pack is so that's just a straight out of the box thing, and not only that, you can actually just set it down on your on your work table like that, and it's completely portable. So. Uh, but the other benefits to this comes with a larger um, uh, a larger reservoir, um, and then it also comes with uh, some uh, some cleaning brushes and a um, uh, a USB charged um, 
um, a charge a charge cable because uh, it, it just charges uh, just by plugging it in uh, in, in the bottom bottom there. So the other things that I'm I'm looking at is just how the airbrush itself um, works, and of course we've got uh, needle. little bit of a control it's mm, similar to my uh, similar to the Grex that I have but it's um, certainly doesn't feel nearly as um, that this is probably a you know it's a competent airbrush um, the uh, and I'm gonna give it a uh, put it through its paces about apply, applying this. I mean, it, it doesn't feel quite as sophisticated as it, but one of the things that I'm actually curious uh, curious about here uh, is this airbrush comp uh, compatible with, um, my, uh, with, my, with my compressor. And I'll uh, look at that, look at that. So now I've actually got basically what is a mini compressor for, uh, for my, just gotta see if I can see how well that works for basically my uh, the the fittings are the same so it just it's this piece here that uh, that that I so if I wanted to actually use my uh, use my Grex airbrush on this little mini compressor then I can most most definitely uh, make use of that uh, but it does mean that I can actually use both airbrushes with uh, the cord or uh, or with this um, it, it, they seem to they seem they seem to to, to work uh, to work okay together um, and uh, so that's just a little bit of a upgrade to my to my workbench so um, I'll put this through the paces uh, do some painting uh, painting with it uh, but this is uh, just a, a preliminary first look and uh, anyway we'll uh, we'll move this on now to actually doing some some painting work all right gonna be doing just a little bit of a, a test on this um, using this undecorated box uh, box car to prime it white um, using uh, Steinware's primer uh, gonna be testing out uh, the the, uh, the airbrush um, but this box car is basically uh, I'm looking to do just an overall base coat uh, on this but the first thing I need to do is I need to actually remove the trucks the Sino res primer and this is my um, bit into the um, it's probably more than more than I need but that's just into into the cup put the lid on and as you can see almost right away we've got a decent amount of spray and th this is just with the sandal rise straight straight out of the um, uh, just straight out of the bottle. Okay, so <laughs> I, I've done a little bit of a test here and unfortunately I didn't record any of it. So uh, what you see here is just me uh, applying uh, essentially, um, I can't even really call it uh, pre-shading. 
Uh, but this kind of gives you an idea um, that all I used was this uh, with uh, some uh, Steinle Res Red Brown Primer, a little bit of black, uh, just to do a little bit of preliminary uh, laying some color down uh, for a project that I'm, I'm going to be uh, that I'm going to be doing. Um, and uh, so, unfortunately, I didn't hit record. So what I'm what I, I can do is actually show you the kind of precision level that that you can kind of expect out of an out of the airbrush like this. Um, so just give me a moment here, and I'm just gonna flip the fan on. And just with this uh, bit of paper, you can see the kind of uh, coverage that uh, that I can get. Um, you do have to make sure that you keep the needle clean. Um, and sometimes, actually, with the, the needle cap off, you can get some really very, very precise lines. So that kind of gives you an idea of how, how close you can get for, for, some of, for some of this work, which actually, you know, for a 0.3 mil, a millimeter brush, this is not too bad. Now, some may find the air pressure on this just a little, a little bit too high, which is certainly, uh, certainly possible. Um, but this kind of gives you an idea of, of what um, sorts of uh, overall precision that uh, that you can get. Um, more broadly, um, unlike some uh, some other uh, portable airbrushes, there's not a lot of splatter. Uh, with this, uh, so you know th this kind, of, this kind of almost scroll work on it, not too bad. So uh, as you can see, what I've done here, yeah, I, this has worked out fairly well. And uh, so I'm, I mean, I think, you know what? I, I, I think that other people may have had some bad experiences. I like this one. Um, and the real neat thing is, is that also the fittings will actually, uh, as I showed earlier, uh, of my uh, higher end airbrush, uh, and it just is something that I'm going to at least uh, give a try and, s and see how well uh, I can actually make this actually work uh, with that. So that's going to be one of my next tests, uh, is less about the airbrush itself and more about um, how it can be used with your existing Iowata or, or Grex uh, airbrushes as, as well. But anyway, that's it. I'm just going to give this a clean and away we go. Turn that off. So uh, another test with with the um, with the with the airbrush. However, this time what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to remove the airbrush uh, from from its mount. And now I'm not entire the, the generally this uh, this fitting here um, and with with the airbrush here is if I uh, same thing with the, the the valve control. So now what I'm going to do is that this time I'm actually going to put my Grex airbrush, um, which is a, a higher end airbrush, and I'm going to put this on and uh, see how well. Uh, we're going to do a, a coat uh, just using um, <clears throat> the Tamiya Hull Red, Hull Red um, just in the way that I would normally use uh, my airbrush. So here are a few observations and then I'll do some pros and cons. 
The airbrush is a mid-quality gravity feed type airbrush. This isn't a pro or con, it just simply is what it is. It's a 0.3 millimeter needle, which is a good all-rounder for model work, and the different cup sizes allow for some versatility. For its price, it is a decent unit and usable. It's mostly metal with the rear housing cover made of plastic, which I didn't like that, but it doesn't hamper its operation. I wouldn't go with any of the cheaper units than the Autolock. It atomizes reasonably well, and unlike some of the other portable airbrushes, it doesn't spatter, or at least it didn't spatter for me. I've seen some other reviews on some different types of these airbrushes that have been terrible. So my observations and evaluations also include this caveat. Be careful of the one that you're getting. My review only applies to the one that I bought and I tried. And I've included a link to specifically the Autolock airbrush below. But keep in mind, there seems to be a wide variety of quality. So do be careful. So here are some pros and cons of specifically the Autolock portable airbrush that I have. So here are the pros. The obvious one is, well, it's portable. Not having to haul around a compressor and a cumbersome hose to spots on your layout is a definite plus. In addition, it's lightweight and works right out of the box. The battery even comes partially charged. The battery powered compressor is the real plus in this purchase and would be what you're buying this unit for, especially if you have a higher quality airbrush on in your arsenal already. And that leads me to my next point. The battery powered compressor can fit higher quality airbrushes, especially Grex and Iwata. I was able to put my venerable Grex Genesis XG onto it and use it without any issues. However, I'm not sure if this would work with either Pash or Badger. Unlike a larger plug-in compressor, it is very quiet to use. There's a slight vibration when holding the unit but it is much softer than the ventilation fan, which I had to work on to cancel out the noise from the working video itself. The battery powered compressor seems to hold a decent charge. In all, in the example that I used, I used it for a little bit more than a half hour and there was still plenty of a charge left and I detected no loss of pressure at any point when I used it. Now, since my regular compressor doesn't have a tank, this is something that I often have to deal with with the loss of air pressure. So not having that with the battery powered one, curiously enough, was a plus. Now for some of the cons. The big thing is the air pressure is fixed and there's no real way to measure it. The specs claim that it runs around 20 to 25 PSI. However, when I compared it to my plug-in hobby compressor, my best guess would be it's a little lower than that, somewhere around 18 to 23. The dual action nature of the airbrush it comes with helps this a little bit, but it doesn't give you the same kind of control that you can dial in with a larger compressor. So do keep that in mind. There may be some ways to address this, at least in hand, but this is one of the limitations right out of the box. The battery powered compressor adds a little bit of bulk to the bottom of the airbrush and can affect how close you can get to a surface when spraying, or at least the angle. The airbrush itself is passable. It's mostly made of metal, but the plastic end cap on it was something that I, as I mentioned before, didn't really like. Now for some of the uses, and the most obvious one is scenery. Without having to lug around a compressor, it is quick and easy to use. It holds a charge well and is suitable for most projects of this kind of nature. Whether it's painting clouds on a backdrop, painting track, detailing a riverbed or a road, this is where a unit like this will shine. The larger cup that it comes with means that you can do a reasonable amount of work without refilling the cup. Even then, you can also use it on the hobby desk in the same way that you might use a regular airbrush. It may be not as precise as a more expensive airbrush, but it does get the job done, as you can see with some of the scroll work that I did just on a test piece of paper here. So is a portable or cordless airbrush worth it? So far, yes, but be careful about the one that you get, as they are not all created equal. Is it an essential tool? No, of course not. But it is inexpensive enough to make it a worthwhile investment to make some of your scenery work much easier to do, and you can do model work in a pinch as well. I have a specific link to this particular airbrush on Amazon in the show more section below. Unfortunately, I cannot say the same for other brands or makes of cordless or portable airbrushes. So in short, buyer beware. But at least with this one, the auto lock one that I reviewed here is worth it for what I was testing it for.
So I hope you found this review helpful, and if you want to get more tips on how to get the most out of your painting and weathering projects, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. In addition, of course, the Down and Dirty Weathering Contest version 3 is now active. If you want to see the uh, progress on that or the rules for that, just look for the link up here in the corner. As well, if you can check some of the links down below as well as you, where you can find the cordless airbrush on Amazon. So thanks so much for watching. Good luck and may you keep on tracking.